Welcome to section 5 of Microbiology Fundamentals. In this section, I'll be introducing fungi and some basic information about this group of organisms. Let's get started. This is an image showing the structure of fungi. Notice that fungi are similar to human cells in that they have a nucleus and other key cellular structures, such as microtubules and a cell membrane. However, there are also some key differences. For example, the cell membrane of fungi have a unique molecule known as ergosterol. This has a similar structure to cholesterol in human cell membranes and also has a similar function. It provides support to the cell membrane. We'll talk more about this when we get into fungi pharmacology, but because this is a unique molecule to the fungal cell wall, it's an important target of certain antifungals, such as nystatin and amphotericin B. Another difference between human cells and fungal cells is that they have a cell wall. This is composed of chitin, beta-glucans, and manoproteins. The synthesis of beta-glucans is also an important drug target and can be inhibited by echinocandins. There are two major types of fungi. The first type is referred to as filamentous and is comprised of small hyphae that collectively form a mycelium, and the other type is referred to as yeast. This is a depiction of the filamentous type of fungi. As you can see, the small filamentous branches are referred to as hyphae, so you can see a hypha right here. Collectively, the network of hyphae are referred to as a mycelium. You can also see that cells are divided by septae, so you can see a septum right here. However, not all fungi are this way. Some mycelia have non-septate hyphae, and we'll discuss this in more detail as we introduce the pathogens that exhibit this morphology. Sometimes you may hear this pattern of growth referred to as a mold, and this is synonymous with a mycelium. This is a nice slide showing the difference between mold and yeast. As you can see, the mold on the left looks like a bunch of little filaments when examined closely. You can see many hyphae, and collectively, these form a mycelium or mold. This is a single organism with multiple cells, so it's considered multicellular. On the right, you can see a close-up view of yeast. These are single-celled structures and reproduce through budding. As you can see, there are little spherical structures budding off of each other, for example right here. All right, now that you understand molds and yeast, let's discuss monomorphic and dimorphic fungi. Monomorphic fungi are those that only exist as one form. So they will forever be a yeast or a mold, and the morphology will not change based upon environmental conditions. On the other hand, dimorphic fungi are those that can exist in the form of both yeast and mold, and this varies depending on the environment. So environmental conditions dictate morphological features. In other words, in the presence of cold, the fungus may assume one form, and in the presence of heat, it will assume a different form. Most commonly, fungi assume the mold form when it's cold and the yeast form when it's warm. This is why you've probably heard of the catchy mnemonic, mold in the cold and yeast in the heat. Clinically, this means that once these fungi enter a host, the fungal spores germinate into yeast, so any sample taken from a patient should reveal yeast. All right, now let's transition and discuss fungal spores. A spore is a dormant cell that's designed to survive harsh conditions. The main reason we're discussing this is because it can be confusing when you start thinking about bacteria. Bacteria and fungi both produce spores. However, fungal spores are structurally distinct from bacterial endospores and are also less durable. Nevertheless, fungal spores are an important aspect of fungi because they allow these organisms to reproduce asexually. Another thing to keep in mind is that while only a couple types of bacteria produce endospores, almost all fungi produce spores. Anyway, the main takeaway from this slide is that fungal spores are distinct from bacterial endospores, so don't get them confused. This is an image of Aspergillus. As you can see, the organism is forming hyphae, and one of the branches is producing spores right here. Fungal spores have complicated names, such as conidia, but they essentially all perform the same function and look kind of like what's shown in the image. All right, let's wrap up this video with a question. A two-year-old boy has a diaper rash due to the fungal organism known as Candida albicans. Targeting of which of the following structures would be most helpful in treating this patient's condition? A, mitochondria, B, ergosterol, C, cholesterol, or D, protein synthesis. Okay, the key takeaway is that this patient has a fungal infection, so we must figure out which structure is unique to fungi. With this in mind, the correct answer is B, ergosterol. This is describing the mechanism of nystatin, which can be used to treat diaper rash. Ergosterol is the only answer choice that describes a cellular structure unique to fungi. This is an image showing the structure of fungi, which we talked about earlier. As you can see, ergosterol is present in the plasma membrane of fungi and is a unique molecule from human cells, which makes it an important antifungal drug target. A, C, and D are wrong because these are all features of both fungi and human cells. So targeting of these structures would most likely harm both types of cells and ultimately be unhelpful or even harmful. So again, the correct answer is B, ergosterol. And that concludes this section.